In the last video, we built Mario using the Pathfinder 1st Edition rules. For this video, we're going to talk about Pathfinder Core Classes. For the purpose of our build, we're rating the variations of Mario based on optimizing his spring attack, rating each version from weakest jumper to the mightiest leaper. Isolated in the outskirts of Mushroom Society, a lone plumber has been cast into a world unlike his own and forced to fight in a war that is not his. He has to keep a smile on his face. The rage that boils beneath him must be kept in check, not just for his sake. His only comfort in this strange wilderness is also his greatest regret. Luigi, his brother and only family, is here with him. In 12th place is probably a surprise for some, the Barbarian. As a class known for athleticism, I expected this one to be higher on the list. However, there are a few problems we run into with Barbario when we try to focus on optimizing his jump. Right at first level, we get a nice plus 10 boost to his base speed. Barbario's first rage power is going to be Raging Leaper, which will let us add his level to acrobatics checks for jumping. For his totem, we went with Ancestor Totem, choosing acrobatics as his family skill. That will give us a plus 6 when we get the Greater Totem. Beyond that, we run into a snag. We can only take the Swift Foot Rage Power three times, and even though it stacks with itself, it is an enhancement bonus which doesn't stack with the enhancement bonus we already get from the boots of striding and springing. The sprint rage power lets us run up to six times his speed as a full round action but that does not help us with his spring attack which is a different kind of full round action. With little else to help us with leaping in his rage powers we're open to focus on other aspects of Mario's powers. Hurling and body bludgeon rage powers are good choices to give him more options and combat. It really made the character feel like his Super Mario Bros. 2 version, hurling turnips at enemies at one another. <laughs> Barbario's final jump bonus is plus 80, but his speed of 50 made him fall just short of the pack. Barbario's jump caps at 90 feet. Mario is the face of a revolution against an oppressive turtle dragon dictator. His primary goal is to rescue the princess, but he also has to keep her entertained in times of peace. Nothing pleases his muse more than watching the plumber reenact the thrilling exploits of his adventures in the Mushroom Kingdom. Raise the curtain. In 11th place is the Bard, and for this version of Mario, we used the Court Fool archetype. Although Daredevil could also work in flavor and mechanics, Bard is a charisma-focused class, so the high mental stat for this build will be Charisma. Bardio's class abilities typically lie in granting competence bonuses to skill checks, which is of no help to us when his ring already grants us a plus 10 competence bonus. At first level, the Court Fool trades out bardic knowledge for buffoonery, giving Bardio a bonus to athletics, bluff, climb, and disguise checks equal to half his level. Since Bardio is the first spellcaster on our list, he sure as shootin' is gonna buff himself with a few spells before he makes his jump. Just as Mario has to charge his P-meter before making a great leap in Super Mario Bros. 3, many of our casters are going to want to cast Haste first. This will increase his enhancement bonus to speed to a plus 30. Greater Heroism grants a plus 4 morale bonus to his skill, and Bestow Insight grants a plus 6 insight bonus. Finally, Bit of Luck gives the Bard a Reservoir of Luck points. While making an attack roll or skill check, he can spend these points to gain a bonus die on his d20 roll. He can do this even after success or failure is determined. At level 16, that bonus is 3d8. Luck bonuses are pretty rare in Pathfinder, and they generally grant very small bonuses, which makes this spell exceptional. The Bard's base attack bonus caps at plus 15, so this class will never qualify for the Greater Spring Attack feat.
Adding up his bonuses, the bard's final jump comes to plus 80 plus 3d8, just barely beating the barbarian in style. At a speed of 60, he beats him in a long jump by a sure two paces. This gives our dashing hero the boost he needs to spring ahead at a distance of 110 feet. Mario is a shining beacon of hope in the Mushroom Kingdom. Against the forces of darkness, hordes of undead, and a ruthless dragon tyrant, our hero stands alone. But does he stand for the side of good, or just the side of law? In 10th place is the Paladin. Paladin is a class that is best suited for heavily armored warriors, which is something we're trying to avoid with Mario. That's why we chose the Enlightened Paladin archetype, which makes Palario function more like a monk, both mechanically and ideologically. Palario? Yeah. Oh, now you're just being silly. Well, you can name the next one. Polario's mental stat focus will be Charisma. The Enlightened Paladin gets the Monk's Unarmed Strike equal to half Mario's Paladin level. The Shining Plumber also receives a Charisma bonus to his unarmored AC and a key pole. He can spend a key point as a swift action to add 20 feet to his movement speed for one round. The Paladin doesn't have the ideal selection of spells on his list for our purposes. So in addition, we will be trading those out for the Temple Champion archetype, choosing the Travel Domain. Mario won't get any Domain spells, but he does gain a plus 10 boost to his speed. His final bonus for jump is plus 62. The Shining Plumber springs ahead at a jump distance of 120 feet. Mario has had to fight his entire life. He fought his way through the wilds of Dino Land. He fought through the dank pipelines of New Donk City. He fought through the rolling plains of the Mushroom Kingdom. He has honed his body into a mighty weapon that he uses to punish those who would dare challenge this smashing brawler. Ninth place takes the Paladin's technique for springing ahead and brings it to the next level. The Fighter's bonus feats are its main class feature. Five of the feats Mario learned at odd levels are combat feats. Mario is instead going to take those feats as Fighter bonus feats, leaving space to take the feat Fleet five times. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Fleet gives Mario plus five bonus to his base speed. We may take it as many times as we want and its effects stack, giving him a plus 25 to his speed. For this build, we're choosing the mobile fighter archetype. So at 15th level, he gets an additional plus 10 bonus to his speed. After that, he still has plenty of combat feats left over. His final jump bonus tops off at plus 62, but his speed is 85 feet. So after a 10 foot running start, we manage a jump range of 126 to 140 feet with a Fighter Mario Spring Attack. In a world plagued by war and pestilence, one middle-class plumber had the foresight to take night classes to obtain his medical degree. Coming in 8th place is the Alchemist. He may not be a core class in first edition, but we had to include him because we love the heck out of Dr. Mario. The Chirurgian archetype makes the most sense thematically. His bombs are reskinned to look like giant pills. Bombs are terrific area of effect weapons, and the healing bomb discovery is just what the doctor ordered to heal multiple allies on the battlefield. This time, his mental stat is intelligence. This works out in his favor since the mutagen of dexterity will be giving him a penalty to wisdom. Eventually, Dr. Mario's mutagen will give him a plus 8 alchemical bonus to dexterity. He even has a few infusions that will help give him some extra pep in his step. Expeditious Retreat, like Haste, increases his enhancement bonus to speed to add 30 feet. Heroism gives him a plus two morale bonus. Bit of Luck is a fun bonus that we talked about with the Bard. The Alchemist can also cast Burst of Speed as a swift action, which gives him plus 20 feet of movement for the round. 
Finally, Dr. Mario can power himself up with the jump spell, which grants him a plus 10 enhancement bonus to acrobatics checks for jump. This bonus increases to plus 30 by level 9. That brings our collegiate professional's jump bonus to a grand total of plus 102, plus 3d8, which will cap at 150 feet. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy our list so far. I started this project back in 2018. I fully intended on finishing it at my downtime, but was also served up a heaping healthy of real life trauma. This was originally going to be a video that just included one build for Mario, but it kind of took on a mind of its own, and I had to get help from my partner to finish it. Although these videos show well ways to make this character, there are relatively infinite number of ways to accomplish the same goal when playing tabletop role-playing games like Pathfinder. Let me know how you you would build Mario for your tabletop game. Speaking of partners, check out Squish Beans on Twitch. She's a variety streamer on Twitch that does crafting, let's play, tabletop, and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. Anyway, I'm Hawk. I'm Wiffle Possum. I gotta bounce. See you next time.